What's up, everyone? Hi, how are you? Uh, welcome to Rally Pharma. You guys know this is World's Best Doctors channel, right? So in this channel, we talk about health, uh, we talk about pharmacy practice. So if this is interesting to you, please feel free to subscribe. Thank you. So we are continuing with our series of careers in pharmacy. I know it's been so long since I did this, but today I'm joined with a very, very special guest. So we have to give her like some drum rolls. <laughs> oh, thank you. I feel so excited to be here. <laughs> yeah. So please uh, welcome Jackie. Please introduce yourself to my audience. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I'm so excited to connect with new pharmacists on LinkedIn. It's fun to finally like meet people in person and even across the world. It's so great. Um, so yeah, my name's Jackie. I've been a pharmacist now for 11 years. I had to think about that for a while. Um, but I started out in uh, <clears throat> more of like hospital and ambulatory care. So seeing patients and really helping providers uh, with their prescribing and making sure that patients understood why they were taking their medications. And all along that career path, I also was a teacher. So I was a faculty member at a college of pharmacy. Okay. And what I found out about myself was that my love for like teaching and mentoring always was a part of what I was doing. Yeah. So I was involved in different areas of pharmacy practice in that ambulatory care world, but um, I always found myself like staying late or thinking about, you know, my learner's development and how to help people be successful. So around 2017, I started exploring like what's out there in that world of like mentoring or even coaching. And I honestly, I didn't know that pharmacists could become coaches or what that even meant. Yeah. Um, and I was fortunate enough to connect with um, an amazing pharmacist here in the U.S. His name is Alex Barker. He's the owner of the Happy Farm D. Um, and I had a mentor connect us and say, hey, you know, I'm interested in learning more about this. Yeah. Would you be willing to share, you know, how you got started? And he said, no, like, join me, you know, join me in this journey yeah. and um, start as a coach. So now um, in my day job, I'm still a faculty and administrator at, at a college. And then in a part-time capacity, I provide career and business coaching for pharmacists um, who are, are looking to make a change with their careers, yeah. thinking outside the box, or they might be interested in starting a new side hustle or business. And some of them want to move full-time into that capacity. So um, yeah, that's a little bit of my background. Um, outside of pharmacy, I have um, two little girls. So one is seven, one is one and a half. Um, and my husband, Paul, who is an amazing person. Um, no, none of this would be possible without him. So got to a, give a little shout out to Paul Boyle um, as well. So yeah, thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to have this discussion. Wow, awesome introduction. You know, when you said 11 years and then I look at how you look, um, I'm like shocked. Like you look so young to be like 11 years in practice. Like, what is oh, this? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you look so young. So um, guys, as you've heard, uh, she's a coach and she's also a pharmacist. So today we are going to talk about now her coaching. So uh, first off, Jackie, tell us about like how you got interested in coaching and how you started. I know you've mentioned, but just go into a little bit of detail. So how did you start this journey of um, coaching and what does yeah. like, coaching entail? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, the, coaching is something you don't talk about hear about much in pharmacy. And I'm excited that this is becoming more of a topic that people are like, what is that? You know, what does that mean? Um, for me, it really began with having some conversations with a mentor about having this like entrepreneurial interest of, you know, I really would love to start mm -hmm. something that I can give back to the world that's outside of the traditional like walls of existing roles. And so um, like any great mentor, he was a coach to me as well and asked me some hard questions about like, what brings you the most joy and excitement in the work that you do? And the answer I kept coming back to was that I loved helping people be successful and reach their goals, you know, think about their future and their dreams and helping them to see things within themselves that they may not have seen before. So like seeing the potential in someone at the time, it was mostly my learners who I was saying, you know, hey, did you ever consider this opportunity or 
what are your thoughts about this career path? And then I learned that coaching was actually like a thing that you could do and that there were a lot of pharmacists who were looking to make changes in their life or their career. Um, and they, there weren't a lot of folks providing like pharmacy specific coaching at that time. Even still there, there are, it's a small network, I would say of folks who are, are doing this, but a growing one. Yeah. And um, the thing I, I think it's helpful to know about the difference between coaching and mentoring so a mentor is someone who likely we all have one or more. I would highly suggest having one or more mentors. And those are the folks who will give you advice, you know, based on their experience and their expertise. So they might say, you know, Linda, based on what I've done, here's what I think you should do too. Yeah. Which is super helpful, right? It's helpful in so many ways to have that person in your life or people that can tell you like what direction you should move in. As a coach, though, our job is to facilitate your thought process and identify any barriers that are getting in the way of achieving your goals. So, you know, as a coach, my I don't need to have the experience that you may be aiming for. Uh, my job is really to help you uncover the answers to the issues that you're facing or the ideas that you have and help you design an action plan to get to that goal faster. So could you reach goals without a coach? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you think about like sports and those, you know, all stars who really excel in what they do, yeah. every one of them has had one or more coaches throughout their, um, you know, career, but that coach is somebody like on the sidelines. They're not doing the sport for that person but they're helping them identify like strategies and tools to be successful at what they do. Yeah. So that's how I kind of think about coaching is that, you know, one of my clients said it so well, she said, you know, I'm on the treadmill doing the running, but my coach is on the side of the treadmill saying, go a little bit faster, yeah. slow it down. What do you think about, you know, raising the resistance in yeah. this scenario? So there's a few metaphors that you can think about with that difference between a coach and a mentor too. Okay, uh, thank you for the brief introduction. So now if you look at a day in life of coaching, so you said you're doing it part-time, but full-time mm -hmm. you're like um, a lecturer at a university, I understand? So now if you look at coaching now, um, for example, I approach you and I want you to coach me. So what does a day in life of a pharmacist coach look like? Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the great thing about coaching is that it's very flexible. So yeah. How it works for us is we set our calendars and availability as to how it fits with our um, regular, like full-time job, I would say. So all of our coaches currently have full-time jobs and then um, coaching is a part-time thing that we do, which is great because we can say like, oh, this month, you know, I have more availability or less availability based on what's going on in my life. Mm -hmm. um, but generally we worked with, we work with clients for one hour. A coaching session typically lasts one hour. Sometimes it's a little bit longer depending on what's going on, what happens in that discussion. Mm -hmm. um, but one hour is the goal. Mm -hmm. And then in between coaching sessions, which usually happen about every other week with a client, mm -hmm. that client will walk away with things that they need to be doing and working on to help move them forward towards progressing on the goals that they've set forth for themselves. Yeah. So generally, I usually work with clients for three months to start. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good amount of time to start to see change or um, that goal being achieved and maybe new goals being defined. Mm -hmm. And then that person can decide, OK, do I feel like I have all the tools that I need or I achieved all the goals that I wanted? Mm -hmm. Or do I want to continue in my coaching experience and work with this person um, for a longer period of time? So I've had folks continue on before are extended beyond that three months as well. So um, generally it's, you know, set your own schedule, uh, work with your client to pick a time that works. And then most of the time we're meeting face-to-face -face like this on Zoom. Um, I have done phone calls in the past, but I love this so much better because I need to see that person's body language and like how they're feeling. Um, I can only get part of that through hearing them, but I can get the full picture by seeing them and seeing how they're reacting to what we're talking about. Okay. As a coach, so if someone approaches you and uh, wants you to now help them, 
So what is the first step you will do and how will you go with them through that process so that they now realize like that this is my goals, this is what I'm supposed to do in order to achieve them, this is what I'm supposed to drop. Uh, just how do you go about doing that? And does it really need a specialized skill or what does it take for someone to be a coach? Yeah, yeah. so that's a great, it's such a great question. What we spend a lot of time on at the beginning of coaching is really uh, visualizing what success looks like for that person. And that's different for everyone. You okay. know, some folks are like, I want a career change, completely something else. Mm -hmm. um, some folks are like, I want to move careers, but I don't even know what the options are. Mm -hmm. um, some people are like, oh, I want to start a business, but I don't know what. Um, and then other times they have very clear ideas in mind of what, what they want to focus on. So first, like, really clarifying and becoming crystal clear on what do you want yeah. and that can take some time and some really hard questions um we don't have any official certifications through our um currently in our, our coach program but we have a training program that we have designed um that's i can't share too much about but um, we use some validated coaching tools and uh, references to train our coaches and make sure that they have all the skills that they need. Um, so using those references, but also we need folks who just come to us wanting to do this and have some unique strengths that they bring to the table that align with coaching as well. So if you're someone who loves you know, working with people and developing them, um, that's really important. Great communication skills are something that's super important. Great listening skills as well. Um, really, really help that person, you know, be a great coach. And um, there are lots, there are training programs out there. I would say the the gold standard in the coaching industry is the International Coach Federation mm -hmm. um, or ICF could be an option if somebody is considering certification. Yeah. Okay, so do you think like this is a career that many pharmacists can venture in? Like, would you advise like a pharmacist to be a coach? And uh, if I approach you like out of the blue, like, yeah, Jackie, I have listened to what you've said, like following this interview, and I really want to venture into this field. And you mentioned the training program. So how can someone go about um, that? Yeah, so I think everyone has a unique path and a unique set of strengths and interests that they either have identified or maybe they need to dig in a bit through coaching, you know, it could be really helpful to <laughs> dig in and say, what do I really want? And what brings me the most joy and excitement? So would I say it's for everyone? Probably not. You know, I think uh, folks have different strengths and, and areas of opportunity, and you should be doing those things that are not one, um, something you're excellent at, um, and that just comes very easily to you, but also something that brings you happiness and joy in your life. Yeah. Um, if that if the work that you're doing feels like a state of flow and that, you know, time could go by and you wouldn't even notice, that's the type of work that I think you should be doing for your whole life. Um, so is it for everyone? I would say no, but if you try it out and you, you know, if you enjoy mentoring mm -hmm. folks like students, you know, trainees, other pharmacists, you might consider something like this. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're interested in you know, becoming a coach, just looking at what companies are available for those coaching experiences. I know for us, we usually bring in new coaches every three to six months as the company continues to grow. So um, there are other opportunities out there potentially, but um, I would be looking to connect with the folks who are working at a coaching company and expressing that interest um, through your networking experiences too. Okay. So looking at your, you as a coach, have you had opportunities that like um, someone has presented to you an opportunity just because you're doing coaching? Uh, are there yeah. instances? And if so, how do they come about and how do you go? About yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that question too. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So uh, a lot of really unique opportunities for like speaking or doing podcasts like this. I love, you know, I love this opportunity. <laughs> This wouldn't be happening if I wasn't doing coaching things, um, but also 
I recently, probably four or five months ago, started working with a organization to also coach pharmacies. So in the past, you know, I worked strictly with pharmacists, mm -hmm. um, but now I've also added on like working with pharmacies themselves to help them identify and move towards their goals. Mm -hmm. um, which has been super fun. I mean, ultimately I'm working with the pharmacists who work there, um, but it's more on the company level and helping them strategize and think about what they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know what the future will bring, but um, it's been really awesome and exciting and have definitely had folks reach out to say like, one, what are you doing with wow. this coaching thing? Or, oh, wow, like we could really use your skills um, potentially in a new opportunity. So yeah, it's been an awesome journey and ride so far, and I don't know what will happen in the future, but I'm excited for it. Okay, we believe the future is great. Yes. Uh, if we look at now the cons, I know for everything, there's the pros and the cons. Right. If you look yes. at the other side, the ugly side of mm -hmm. coaching. So is there anything unique or anything uh, like a disadvantage of being a coach? Like, um, is it such an easy job to do? What are the challenges that you actually uh, face in your life as a coach? Yeah, I think um, there aren't many, <laughs> which is maybe because I love it so much. Yeah. Um, but I think the the things that are maybe more challenging um, are, you know, time management is something you have to be very, you have to pay attention to because if you're, you know, scheduling or rescheduling or doing things, um, working with a few different calendars, like just being on top of communicating any changes, um, or if, you know, something comes up for your client and it's an emergency, like you have to move your, your meeting with them and that happens, life happens. But um, I think one other thing that is just challenging to hear sometimes, but it's also rewarding to see how folks change their life um, is that a lot of times when we get started with um, at the beginning of coaching, you know, people will share things going on in their life or at work that are very hard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Things that I've never experienced, things mm -hmm. that, you know, are going on in their workplace or in their personal life that, you know, I'm, I'm a very emotionally invested person and I, you know, I've cried with my clients. I celebrate mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. um, you just really get to be invested, you know, with their success and hearing some of the things that people are going through. It's hard. It's, it's hard. Um, and so I, I, I wouldn't give up coaching for any of that. You know, I know that that can happen. And I know those conversations could come up. Mm -hmm. Um, but there are times when I'm like, oh my, wow, you know, you are going through a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you, could, you could hear it in their voice and you could see it. Um, and so, you know, the rewarding sides of it, though, are sometimes those things turn around. Sometimes people move themselves out of, um, you know, a bad situation or they get to the other side of that really big challenge and you get to be a part of that. And, um, you know, that's really rewarding, too. Awesome. So any any success story that you've had, like one that uh, you're just like, yeah, this is it. Like, this is the confirmation that I am supposed to be coaching. Just oh, <laughs> well, yeah, this is such a hard question because I, I can't, I don't know if I can. Moment. Yeah. Can yeah. Oh, well, I don't know if I can pick one. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I, I, I would, I think it would be a disservice to yeah. narrow it down to one because mm -hmm. I've had the fortune of being a part of many individuals' lives and I've had people share with me things like, you've changed my life or yeah. you saved my marriage or you saved me. And I'm like, I didn't do that. You did that. You know, I was just fortunate to cross paths with you and you know, be a part of it. And you just never know that people are going to tell you those things or see you in that perspective in their life. Mm -hmm. And for that, I'm just eternally grateful um, to have that opportunity. But <clears throat> yeah, to say one person, I don't know. It's just been every person I've, I've worked with. Um, this week alone, I've had, you know, two people reach out to give me updates about really exciting career changes that they've had. And I, every time I hear something, I'm like, wow, like, that's awesome. And they're like, it's because of you. And I'm like, no, 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 it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just the facilitator. 
you did the, you know, this is you, this is you who made the huge change. So, um, so yeah, I think, I don't know. I can't narrow it down to one. I'm sorry, <laughs> Linda. I can't answer that okay. question. It's okay. So uh, if we look at now someone, let's say someone who's just finished school, like they are pharmacists yeah. and they don't know the path to take. So, and maybe they watch this video and then they're like, yeah, I really would want to go into coaching. Uh, what piece of advice would you actually give such a person? Oh, well, um, we talked about this a bit earlier, but reach out to someone who's doing coaching and just connect with them yeah. as a first step. Um, I'd also recommend, I always recommend this book, but it's been like a game changer. Uh, it's called The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. Um, it's one of our required readings for our coaches, but it's just, it's so good. Um, and also have you ask yourself some really hard questions about what type of work you want to be doing and why. Um, and so I think, you know, doing some really deep self-reflection and then also connecting with people who are in the coaching space can be a couple of really great ways to get started.